All right. What's good? What's good, everybody? Um, today, we're going to move on to the word problems for law signs and law cosigns. So we've already spent time on working with specifically the law signs. And then we had a lesson just working with the law of cosines. So now we're taking a look at the word problems. And you're going to have to be able to set up a triangle from what they give you. And also figure out whether it's law of signs, law of cosines to use and work that out. So at this point, the first two examples we're going to have, the triangles are going to, triangles are going to be set up for you. And we're going to work through that. So um, that should be, shouldn't be the hard part. So don't worry about the setup really for examples one and two because we're going to do that ourselves. Examples um, three and four are the ones that you're going to have to like see on the final exam. You're going to have to set up a triangle from the information they give you, and it's going to be more in depth. So the first two again is just to make sure you can get that um, the triangle. You can set everything up from what they give you, and then go into the actual working part. So here we're going to go into example one here, and we're going to talk about the Leaning Tower of Pisa, not pizza, but Pisa. So here, with example one, I want you to write this down, and I want you to go ahead and draw that little shape that I have down here, this triangle shape, and we're going to fill everything in in a few seconds. So go ahead and stop the video and go ahead and do that. So I trust that you went on and already wrote it down, everything, and now we're going to keep moving forward. So here, we're going to go ahead and take a look at um, the problem, but I'm going to move over to my Elmo. So we're going to do a dual screen right here. So here... I have my lean tower of Pisa and it has all these windows there, blah, 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 because it's a leaning tower and the tower has windows and it's looking out and everything. If you've never been to it, it's like a really good thing to do in Italy. So it's really cool. All right. But here we're going to follow all the pieces that they say in this word problem. And I know it's small, but you have written on your paper. So therefore, it should be easier to see. So here it says, um, closed to tourists since 1990, the leaning tower of Pisa in Italy leans at an angle of about 84.7 degrees so it says the tower leans at an angle of 84.7 degrees so here that means it's going to be in this area is when the tower is leaning so this is our 84.7 degrees now you know it's not over here on this side because this is an obtuse angle which means it's greater than 90 so that can be it cannot be 84.7 let me zoom in a little bit more so you can see it uh, not out then. There we go. All right. So we have 84.7 there. Now, the rest of the part talks about the figure shows that 171 feet from the base of the tower, the angle of elevation to the top is 50 degrees. So first off, let's talk about angle of elevation. That's not a vocabulary word that we're going to have for the class, but it's really good to know because it could show up on the final exam. And if you don't know what it means, then you can be kind of messed up. So let's not be messed up. Elevation. All right. So really, this is talking about the angle from the ground up. All right. So if we're talking about the angle of elevation from the ground up, that's going to be this angle right here. So this is your angle of elevation. And we said in this problem from the ground up, the angle of elevation to the top of the tower, which is the top right there, is 50 degrees. So we put 50 right here. And it says, the, and also before that, right in that same sentence, it says the figure shown that 171 feet from the base of the tower. So the angle of elevation is here. So 171 feet from the base of the tower must mean that this down here is 171 feet. So that's from the base of the tower to the angle of elevation. So that's not bad. We can do this. That's, that's not hard. All right. So now we're going to find the distance to the nearest foot from the base to the top of the tower. Woo. That's our answer. That's what we're trying to find. So it didn't say to solve the triangle. It said to find um, the distance from the top base of the tower to the top of the tower. So are we looking at this side to find the answer? Are we looking for the answer on this side? 
We're looking for the angle. Like, what part are we looking for? Crickets, 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 crickets. So we're looking for from the base of the tower to the top of the tower. So that's this side right here. This is the side we're looking for. This is the side. Okay. So at this point, we're good. So we need to go ahead and solve it out now. So if we solve it out, let's go ahead and label our sides and our angles. So again, it doesn't matter as long as your angles correspond with the sides. So here, we know we're going to say this is A down here. We'll say this is B. We'll say this is C. So A, B, C. So if this is A, B, C, so that means um, X is side C. That means 150, 171, sorry, is side B. And then this side over here is side A. So when we do this, we are trying to find side C. That's it, the side C. Now here, they gave us two angles and a side. So with that, we have to remember, does that go with the law of sines? Does that go with the law of cosine? And so here, we should realize, okay, well, two angles and a side was like our first example for a law of sine. That was that first one. So if you need to go back for reference, go back to that first example we did for law of sine, which was example two for that section. And we're going to do that. So we're going to here look at the law of sine. Sines. And again, here, we'll take a look at what they gave us. So they gave us angle A, they gave us angle C, they gave us side B. Now, if any of these can we figure out, like, any, does anything match? Any letters match here? And you'll be like, no, letters don't match, Mr. Hall, duh. So here, we also said, especially in that example there for um, Law of Signs example two, we started off with finding at third angle because we should be able to figure out something if we used this angle and this side for Law of Signs. So here we have two angles, and we can figure out what this angle is going to be. So let's do that really quickly. So we'll do A plus B plus C equals 180. A plus B plus C equals 180. All right. And then we go ahead and fill all the pieces in. So this is 84.7. We don't know what B is yet. And then C is 50. All right. So we add them together and subtract from 180. We should be able to figure out what B is. So if we do that, we get that B is equal to 45.3 degrees. And we're like, bam, okay, we got that. Okay, so now I'm going to just put that in here, my triangle really quickly. Put that in the triangle. Alright, so now we can use the law of sines with our B's, because we have both B's now. And we can use the law of sines with C's, so we can figure out this side right here. So B's with our C's can help us find our answer. So we're going to do, because we're trying to find law of sine, law of, law of sine, oh, sorry, we're trying to find C. <laughs> I wrote the word law, huh, sorry. So we have sine. C over C. That's what we're trying to find. And then B is what we just found. Or it was part of it was given to us. Okay. So we're going to use that because we're trying to find C. Find lowercase C, sorry. Side C. Lowercase C. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and fill the information in like we've done before. Like we've always done. So side, the angle C is 50, side C we don't know yet. Angle B is 45.3, and side B is 171. We filled it in. Fill in info, fill in info. All right, then we know we cross multiply, so let's do that really quickly. That times that. So 171 uh, sine 50. 
equals C sine 45.3. Okay, so then we have to solve for C. So it needs a different color here. So we're going to divide both sides by sine 45.3. That, that cancel, we have C is left here. Let's move it down, sorry. Let's move C down here. And we have this fraction, 171 sine 50 over sine 45.3. Boom. All right, and then we split into the calculator and we get the answer. And I've already done that. <laughs> so C is approximately, once you put in the calculator, uh, one eighty four point two nine. But if you look at the problem here, it says to the nearest foot, find the distance. So that means it needs to be a whole number for this. So if it's a whole number, we're going to round this to one hundred eighty four feet. And we is done, son. <laughs> All right. So that's it. That's example one.